Hello, my crafty friends. I hope you had a wonderful Christmas. In this video, I'm going to be showing you about dies and die cutting. This is part one of a two part, my back to basics series. So I'm going to be showing you the machine and the dies, and then I'm going to be actually using them for the second video. So please stay tuned. This is my Sizzix Vagabond 2. I didn't even look at the Vagabond 1. I skipped right to this. You push that. And this opens up. And here's the platform. It's just one piece. So unlike... The platform from the crank version. This is a thin die adapter. And then I went ahead and bought two long glass plates. This is the bottom one. Wrote on this one, do not cut. And there's the plug in. And this you can go forward and backward. That's backwards. It's forward. And there's your on-off switch. You keep that pushed. And there's no cranking involved at all. Although the downside obviously is if you don't have electricity, you can't run it. And or the motor can burn out. But this works well for me now at this point. And this is a small version of the crank. I did have a bigger version called the Big Kick, appropriately enough. And I will show you a picture up here. That was given to me when I first started crafting. This is called a Sidekick. And... This makes a suction stick to your surface. And these are the two plates. I actually bought these at a Scrapbook Expo. These are thicker, so you don't have to use any shims. And then you put your paper and then your die. This one you go backwards. And then forwards to bring it back out. I always do that. I go back and forth. But I have not used this since I bought my Vagabond. It would do well for the smaller pieces, for sure. Next, let me show you my dies. This is my collection of dies. And I have some that are included as a kit, like my Hero Arts. The stamps and the dies are over on my desk. But these are just the dies. I have some Stampin' Up! dies. But this is pretty much it. And I do have some loose ones. Also here. That if I'm busy, I just plop them in here and then put them away later. Sometimes. <laughs> I have to admit, they do have a permanent home here. Most of the time. But anyway, those are my dies. And if I were just starting out, I would start with the shapes. These are banners from Snappin' Up. Um, there's heart, heart nesting uh, hearts that I have used, but I, they're not all nested right now. There's some circles and egg shapes and triangles. Here's some more of those hearts. 
nesting dies are, are really good. You've got on here some also that make this really pretty jaggedy pattern, but they're nesting also. They make the, the different sizes. Here's some banner dies. I think those are handy. And here's some oval dies and some square stitched sticks stitched square dies and frame dies for sentiments. So definitely if I was just getting started, these are the everyday label dies from Stampin' Up. And here are the circle dies from Stampin' Up. You've got your scalloped frame and then you've got your regular circle. So if I was just starting out, I would get the shapes to make like sentiments, um, cut pattern paper, you can do that. And you can always just cut around images. If you stamp an image, you can cut around it with your scissors. That's called fussy cutting. But ideally, um, your shapes would probably be your best bet if you were just starting out and you only had so much to spend. As I said earlier, I will be demonstrating how to cut cardstock, pattern paper, using all the shapes. So thank you so much for watching, and I will see you next time. Bye-bye.